Welcome to Land the House, I'm Seth. In today's video, I'm gonna be moving all the electronics that are in my crawl space for the micro hydro and solar power out here to my two foot by four foot by eight foot outdoor power shed. The reason for this is to get those electronics out from under there so I won't have to stoop down to work on them. And also, if something ever happened down there that it had a fire, it'd be better to have it inside of this power shed where I have lined the walls with concrete siding. So hopefully nothing will ever catch fire in here. Now you may notice that my voice is a little bit uh, more high pitched and squeaky than usual. So uh, I'm a bit sick. Uh, so this is gonna be the very first land house video with a voiceover after what, uh, 1300 videos. So anyway, um, hope you enjoy this video. I'm gonna first start under the house, pulling those electronics off the wall, and then we'll come back out here and get them installed. But anyway, enjoy this voiceover. This is my micro hydro turbine. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off by the ball valve for safety. I'm also unplugging my solar panels so that I won't get electrocuted. It took me all summer to install these components. I've got two Midnight Solar Classic charge controllers. I've got two grid telemeter inverters and this off-grid 3000 watt inverter and all the batteries, the cables are just a giant mess. So it's time to get these off the wall. First thing I'm gonna do is disconnect the power from the batteries to the grid telemeter inverters. And then I'm going to disconnect the Midnight Solar Classics. Now everything is disconnected. I'm able to now take my wrench and get my cables off the batteries. So positive and negative. Basically all these wires coming together is what happens when you don't use a bus bar. Definitely will have a bus bar in the upcoming install. Now I'm going to remove the four screws that hold the Midnight Solar Classic cover on. Don't forget to remove that phone cable or else you'll snap it out of there. I've done that more than once. The larger red and black wires are going from the charge controller down to the batteries and the red and white wires are coming from the hydro. Also going to remove the auxiliary one and auxiliary two that go to a relay and to the Wisbane Junior. As you can see, I have skipped a whole bunch of steps. I'm now removing that grid telemeter inverter and now it's time to get the breaker box. And then I'm also gonna be removing the Wisbane Junior and the shunt. And now everything is disconnected. It's time to haul these 75 pound batteries out to the new power shed. They are so heavy, especially when you're squatting down like I am. Okay, about three days have passed. My voice is a bit better. It's no longer snowing out here and it's warmed up to about 50 degrees, so much better than it was before. I also learned something about myself. I do not do well with filming without talking for voiceover work. I just never have done it before. And uh, anyway, uh, also it did get cold last night. There's ice out here. Um, so uh, anyway, Let's go ahead and get back to work. So uh, on Thursday was my work day. I spent six hours preparing the video because I did not realize just how much work that it was gonna be to get this stuff moved. Um, so as you can see, I've moved all the electronics, the batteries, haven't moved that yet because I'm not gonna be using it. But here's the deal. I had two ethernet cables, the switch for the off-grid inverter, the two legs of the main power, the um, two uh, limiter inverter sensors, the amp readers for the main. I had the, um, the power going from the off-grid inverter into the house and um, the, the two wires for the solar, the two wires for the hydro. Anyway, a lot more wires and cables than I had anticipated. And so let me show you what I've done out here. Um, to get that from in the house to out there. I've got the power shed open. So I actually took two inch and a quarter pipes from out of the house. I had to drill through both sides of the concrete block, which was a chore. Anyway, um, I also 
kind of angled them a little bit to get away from the vent but that essentially brings in all the wiring and uh, here's an issue I had this limiter switch is only about 10 foot long and so I'm gonna have to mount this inverter here and the other one right there on this side which I was anticipating having everything out here flat on the main surface but we'll just have to do what we do um, also the two um, wire coming from the house main legs I uh, mounted over here because that wire was also short and then also the uh, solar is short so I'm just going to put a box up here for that uh, breaker and if you go over here this is the hydro wire everything is off of course except for that that's live but um uh, so this right here is going to be used for taking power from the um, off-grid inverter into the house these are my two uh, ethernet cables and then this one here is the uh, switch for that off-grid inverter so uh, that being said you can see the batteries are out here i've wired those up um, except they're not connected i've just got all of them uh, as two big batteries basically <clears throat> so today's task is to start mounting stuff um, so like we said uh, these will have to go over here and here because of the uh, short length of those. Now the uh, stuff that comes out of these will just be able to plug right over here. So it kind of keeps that all to itself over there. And so I think what I'm going to do is mount the um, two Midnight Classic, one for solar, one for hydro, over here as well. Maybe here and here. And then have the various switches down there which you've seen look like those. We've got to have the bus bars down here for the hot, the negative, and the ground. And then <coughs> I'm going to have that off-grid inverter over here somewhere. Um, and I'm thinking what I'm going to do is then make a little uh, wooden table. I don't know, it may come up to about like here. And that way I can have a space up in here that can be used for testing of various equipment as it comes in uh, for YouTube videos. And then over in this corner, a company is possibly going to send me a giant house backup system that, um, anyway, it's like a six, uh, what is it, a uh, kilowatt hour system? Anyway, um, and a 4.3 uh, kilowatt. Anyway, um, that'll go here, and I can use um, the other leg of this or I'll probably even just drill in another set of uh, conduit um, for all of that. <clears throat> anyway, a lot of stuff to do. There's the uh, Whizbang Junior and all kinds of stuff. Got to do breakers. Let's get to it. I'm going to try not to bore you with every individual little step, but so for this one, I've already got that limiter uh, cable on, so I know where this can go to. So I'm thinking that's probably about as high as I'll be able to go right there. So let's just go ahead and get that started. <laughs> this is going to be fun. I tested out this concrete board with a torch and found that it does not burn at all, which is really nice. Okay, that should just at least get us up here I don't see any reason to put more than those two I think it should be fine uh, the other one needs to go on the other side now for the solar coming in I've got the red wire here that needs to go into this little breaker box so I'll have to put that about right here so it can come up go down in there and connect to that breaker which looks like this right here uh, so let's just go ahead and uh, get this, I guess, the general area of where it needs to be so I can put that box on there. And so these breakers have a little tab down here that pops open. You just set it on the rail in there and then you can snap it back into place. So let's just see where that can fit. Yeah, so about right there should be fine. I 
Now I've got the two Midnight Classics. This one is the uh, 250, which means that's the Hydro, because sometimes that Hydro can peak up more than 200. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a screw up here. All right, get that one just in place. And then you have to open these up in order to put the other mounting screws in. So I'm gonna go ahead and just get the other one down below it, just for a general idea here. So this one's gonna be for the solar, because it's a classic 200. All right, hopefully this wiring is clean enough. The positive of the solar goes up back here into the top of the breaker, comes out, goes down here, and into the Midnight Classic. The negative comes over here straight and just goes right in. And then for the hydro, the red wire goes over there, up into the breaker box, and then it just goes straight over here to the Midnight Classic. And then the negative goes up and over like that. I have both Midnight Classic and both of the grid tie limiter inverters installed. Now, subscriber and fellow YouTuber, Workbench Z, sent over some bus bars. I've got two of the black, two of the red, and so I'm gonna be using these to get all of my negatives and positives together. This will become very handy. In the previous install, I used my switches down here as the bus bar and just kind of lined several leads in there and it was not pretty so this should help out a lot if you would help me out by checking out the workbench z channel he has uh, just started and has a few videos and has been very generous for supplying a lot of things here that i've used on the channel so anyway links in the description down below this is the battery negative and i want to make sure that everything that goes to battery negative first goes through the Whizbang Junior and the shunt. So I'm gonna remove this from the block of wood and then put it straight onto here. And that's where the battery negative is gonna go to. I believe it's uh, this one down here. And uh, everything else will go from this one up here into one of the new bus bars. Things are looking so much better now that I have the new bus bars here. The wiring is a lot less tangled like it was previously. So I just uh, took my battery negative here, went to the shunt, stepped over here, and then went to the two different bus bars. And so one's going down here to this classic, and then I've got the other one going up here to this classic, and then these two here go over to the inverters. And so those are wired up. Got them nice and uh, bundled there with some uh, cord management. Uh, so next I need to put in the uh, positive and that's going to have the four different uh, switches as well. So I'll probably take these and put them maybe, I don't know, right here or so. Um, kind of the same way as I did these. Just go one, two, and that way maybe I can uh, just go right over just a little distance to the four different switches. Um, that I've got, I showed you this earlier, like that one. Um, and that way, I can go one straight over to the different classics, and maybe I can get one to uh, sneak in here and go down for each of the inverters. Because um, I think I have plenty of the cable left over for that. But anyway, so far, I am pleased with the way this is looking. It's not too much of a jumbled mess at the moment. Now it's time to move over to the positive side of the batteries. So I've just got these linked together, which means there are now two sets of 48 volt battery. And so one cable sneaks around over here, which I'm gonna be mounting up here, just like I did with the negative. So we've got the two different bus bars. Now to do the two of them, I'm gonna need a, uh, a piece of wire that goes between like this one. So let's go cut this down and make a piece like that. Workbench Z also sent over this really cool kit. It is a ring terminal. Um, I guess it basically puts a ring on your cable here and it came with these cutters. So I'm gonna cut that red cable to the length I need here. It's pretty uh, smooth, makes a nice cut. And then I can also use these to remove that sheathing 
just spin it around a couple of times until it cuts the sheathing down to the metal. You can kind of feel when it happens. And then, hopefully just slide this off of here, like that. And then now, I take one of these four gauge uh, ring terminals, slip that over there. Uh, now my shrink wrap fits on afterwards, so I'm gonna hold off on that for just a second. Get my tool here. Uh -oh. Go ahead and put that in there first. All right, here we go. Ah, just crimps that down. Yeah. And then I like to uh, turn it and then do it again to make sure it's really on there nice and snug. Okay, very good, it's really on there. Then I'm gonna take a piece of this shrink wrap and slide that over. I'm gonna use my torch to uh, heat up that shrink wrap. Something like that. And now we have the cable we need to go between those uh, two bus bars. I've really been enjoying this crimping tool from Workbench Z, and uh, I'm almost done with my first one pound canister of fuel here. If only there was some way to refill this thing from a 20 pound canister. I like this adapter so much, I'm giving one as a gift to my friend, Seth Johnson, at the YouTube channel, Landa House and Tools Tech and Gear. Heads up, Seth. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. So uh, I can use this little tool to uh, basically fill up my canister here from the 20 pound. Um, go check out Workbench Z, link in the description down below. I'm gonna share this one terminal here for the wire that goes up to the next bus bar. Okay. I'm going to tighten everything down later. Well, let's see how close we can get to leveling this out like the other one. I may actually go lower because we've got all those switches to install. So let's go, let's go really low, like down here, I believe. And a new day is here. My voice is getting a little bit better. It's nice and warm out. So let's go ahead and hopefully get all of this set up today so we can actually turn the power back on because for a week now, I've not been able to use the hydro or solar. So uh, what I want to do now is get the last two red wires done. So I've got this one here, which is gonna go to this inverter. So I just wanna clip it onto that, sneak it around here, come down to another one of these switches and then I have to make another small cable to go over to the bus bar. So let's go ahead and get this done first. I'm going to try to keep all my cables pretty neat here. So I'll probably just wrap this one up with this black one that's right here. Um, but for now, we should be able to kind of do the same thing where it just folds back under that one. Let's go ahead and get it attached right here. Yeah, I'm just gonna snake it around here and uh, kind of follow where the other one is. And I'm gonna use this cable management the same way. And then so for this, I just wanna go ahead and put it on one of these switches. I believe these switches were rated for somewhere around 60 volts maybe. So it works well on this 48 volt system. I will try to remember to put links in the description to the stuff that I use here. And I'm hoping that I can go through and do an individual review on different components. Um, like the inverters over here, I've not made a review on before. 
And uh, you can find lots of information about the Midnight Classic, um, but I may just do a simple video on that as well. So I'm just making sure that I have these switches tightened down really good. And that way I can move it over here and uh, hopefully find a good spot for it. So I just want it to follow the same path down here and hopefully I can like put it right in here somewhere. Maybe like, I don't know, right there. Yeah, I think so. So we gotta figure out the length we need to go from this piece here down to that piece there. I do have this switch turned off because now that I have the black and red wires connecting here, I don't wanna have any kind of spark. So I think I'm gonna go up like that and then down. I just made this short cable here. All of the switches that I have have a rather large uh, bolt in them. And so I have to use my new end, which is smaller for the bus bar over here. But it is working out quite well. For some of you, this is still going to be a terrible mess, but for me, it is way better than what it was before. So here is a picture I took of all this stuff right before I got started, and you can see that this was just a disaster. So anyway, I am much more pleased with this. There's a couple more things that have to be done. I need to hook up the internet to the Midnight Classics. They've both got their own cable here. Also, I need to reconnect this right here which is the, uh, it goes to the shunt and the whiz bang junior, which is over here on the side. And it'll give some information of what's being consumed by the battery. And then also these two controllers are in uh, follow me mode. And so I need to hook up these two phone lines between those. And I'll probably just tuck the extra down over here to the side. And then uh, what else do we need? I think that's it. Oh, I've got to go back under the house and um, connect the hydro to uh, the rectifier, but I'll do that without you. Anyway, it's coming along. Let me get this stuff done and we will turn everything back on. I believe everything is wired up. Everything is looking pretty good too. I'm really pleased with the layout and the cleanliness of everything. The last thing I have to do is plug up the inverters and I'm not exactly sure which one needs to go into which plug here. So uh, we'll have to figure that out as we go because one way, the amp reader won't do correctly and it'll just start pumping full power. Second, uh, it'll limit it down. So we'll just have to play with that. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is turn on the Hydro Classic. So I'm gonna label everything later, but this one right here is the Hydro. All right, it is powering on. Let's make sure it's gonna show up here. Oh, let me turn this so you can see what's going on. There we go. 48.9 volts on the battery. And, okay, let's go ahead and figure out which, oh yeah, let's go ahead and flip this on for the hydro. I just heard the hydro off the hill kick on uh, and it slows way down. So it's got 34 watts coming in, 39. And that'll keep bouncing around until it finds the, uh, the right spot. Okay, so that's working. Let's go ahead and turn on the solar. So this one down here, that just uh, made its little noise. So far, so good. It says 49 volts resting. Very good. Let's kick the solar on. All right. It says it's in the waiting period. Should kick on right about now. There we go. Okay, 220, 1,000, 600. Uh, it's late in the afternoon. Well, it's 2.30, but it's in the middle of... Uh, 
November, so it shouldn't be tons of power going in. It's between 550 and 600. Up here we've got 85 to 90 going in. So that's good. Everything so far is working. The batteries are charging up. Uh, so the next task here is to get these plugged up. And uh, hopefully to do that, what I can do first is let's say this one is gonna go down here. So that just kicked on. And then let's go ahead and put this one over here. Up here. And that is turned on now. All right, that one's gonna to go to this one. Let's go ahead and do that. Just heard it pop. And our display is showing nothing at the moment. All right, I'm saying negative 100 and 111. So let's turn that off and swap these cables over. Okay, so now hopefully we can uh, turn this on and see a positive number there. Yep, 97, we got 13, nice, all right, that's correct. So let's flip this one on, should be a small pop. There it was. 65 watts, all right, I think we are back in business. So nice to have all of this back up and running because with uh, using the heat lately, it's definitely uh, been adding to our power bill. It's quite a video, huh? Started off, I was so sick, couldn't talk, and then just progressively got better. Almost totally good, but not quite. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. It has been so nice to finally get this thing turned on and working. I'm glad everything is going smoothly. A few things. Um, coming up, I have got the off-grid inverter. It's that Sun Gold Power 6000 watt. It's probably going to go right here. The thing is a beast. It weighs 103 pounds, so I'm probably going to dismount that right here on the wall. And then that's what um, this wire right here is gonna be used for. That will go into the house and have some dedicated outlets. Now, I probably never will use anything close to the 6,000 watt that's rated for. I'll probably never go above 1,500 to be honest. Um, just run some basic things in the house. Uh, so, and I've also got something really special coming for this corner over here, which will probably have its own uh, dedicated solar array up here and be able to supply uh, 4,000 watts and also have uh, 6,000 kilowatt hours of storage, supposedly. We'll find out. It's gonna be a product coming up soon. Uh, another thing is um, Workbench Z has been very gracious to supply the, um, the bus bars and uh, that crimping tool and also the propane refill. So if you would do me a favor by going to his channel, link in the description down below, and give him a subscribe and some comments, I imagine he would be uh, overjoyed to, to get that from you. All right, uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of run through all the wires real quick. So if there's anybody that is wondering what all this even means, then maybe it will be helpful to uh, have that little run through real quick. So first off, let's just start with the batteries. This is a 48 volt battery system, which means I have two sets of four. So one, two, three, four, and then likewise four on the back there. So this whole side over here is the negative. We've got negative right there, and it's linked together with a four gauge to this negative over here, as you can see right there. And so the negative, positive, is then connected to negative, connected to positive to negative, positive to negative, and it goes all the way over here to the last positive, and those are connected. Basically, anything that's connected onto these positives is positive, and anything connected to these negatives is negative. So um, that's why I'm able to take one cable up to this set of bus bars. So all of this is essentially either one of those posts. It's all the same. 
Um, so right here it goes through the shunt with the Wizbang Junior, and that gives some information for what's passing through the negative here. And then from there, it goes on up and links all of these. So we took one right here straight into this Midnight Classic for the solar. And then another one uh, goes up right here into this Classic for the hydro. And then these two negatives come up and over and go to the negatives here on uh, these two grid tie limiter inverters. So how these work are there are um, amp clamps that go above on, on the main of the house power. And it reads if power is coming in or not. And so if you look on here, it's got 110 watts and 4 watts. You can't really see it, but 4 watts right down here is coming in from the grid. Which means these only supply to the house and never to the grid which is very handy. So out of these, uh, the wire comes down here and plugs up to just regular grid uh, receptacles here. All right, so that's that. Let's go over here to the positives. Um, so like I said before, that black one right there is the same as this point, this point, this point, and that point. So it's all basically the same negative. Okay, over here, you got your positive wire coming out connects here to this bus bar, goes to this one, and then you got all your switches, and those are important to turn things off. So let's just say this one right here is feeding power to this Solar Classic. This one right here is going up to the Hydro Classic, and then these two are the positives feeding the inverters. Now the batteries are being charged through the um, Solar and Hydro. So we've got uh, the hydro coming in right here, going up over to a breaker, which then goes out, around, down, over to this classic. And then the negative from the uh, hydro just comes up into the negative. So once again, this is a switch. These are switches just for protection. That one will trigger if it hits a certain amperage. And then likewise, the solar, which is kind of hard to see down in the corner, just comes up over into here with this one right there. I'm gonna label all this later, but um, this is a breaker. Then it goes down here to this one. And likewise, the negative just comes over and goes right in here. So the batteries and the inverters and the charge controllers are kind of two separate things. So the batteries are feeding the uh, inverters and the charge controllers are feeding the batteries. Um, but they are independent of each other. So I can turn off the inverters and the batteries will still charge through these. I can turn off the classics with the solar and the hydro and those will still consume the batteries until the low voltage is reached. So you can basically uh, have them separate. Um, some people are questioning about that. But anyway, that's the way I understand it. If you've got some comments or questions, leave those down below. I'd love to uh, learn some more from my audience. I also have to install the ground for all of this, which I've got right over here. You can see that really tall ground rod. Um, I'll probably install that over here, I guess, maybe. Just somewhere in the ground over here. Um, and that will give me a ground that I can connect. Um, like these need a ground. They'll have to have it, but they need one. And then whenever I hook up the generator to all this, it'll need a ground. And also, the off-grid inverter needs a ground, and uh, probably some other stuff that I'll get into at some point. So um, I'll do a separate video on hammering that ground rod in there. And then I may also be adding another one of the pipes, like I did back over here, to have another set of wires going into the house that will be dedicated to the product that's coming over here in this corner. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I've learned something about myself. I do not do well with voiceover work. I've got to be talking whenever I'm working to get things done for video purposes. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye. Simba, Luke, I am your father. What else does uh, James Earl Jones play in? Anyway, <laughs> thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.